Today's show is about killing cancer. Is the cause the cure? Dr. Ben Lerner is a chiropractor, nutritionist, and fitness trainer. His breakthrough strategies are part of a growing movement to transform the way we approach health care. Dr. Lerner began his practice in 1994, and years later, he co-founded Maximize Living, a transforming health and wellness program. Often educating audiences on health and creating resources, Dr. Lerner has authored several New York Times best-selling books on health, and he's the chairman of the Wellness Advisory Council for Sports. A former All-American wrestler, he frequently consults with Olympic teams optimizing peak performance health. From Florida, please welcome Dr. Ben Lerner. Hey, welcome back, Ben. It's good to have you with me. Great to be back. We're talking about cancer today. You mentioned on another show that we just shot about a friend and that seemed to really precipitate this book and this whole thinking of helping people. And tell me that story again. He was, he was like finished in the doctor's minds. Yeah, and so here's somebody only 34 years old, three small children, mm -hmm. and told that he has a form of cancer generally that somebody 74 years old would have. It had metastasized to his brain, four brain tumors, and that he had no chance of making it. So of course we were like, well, we're not gonna just stick with just this conventional road and have him die. So we set out on a journey to overcome this cancer and is, most importantly, came up with a way to prevent it. So as we went through the process, I said, God, if you allow him to live, I wanna create a, a way of helping people not get this in the first place so we don't have to go through this kind of trauma and drama ever again, but also a way that people can overcome this disease even if they've been told there's no chance. Like how bad was it again? It was in his brain, it was in his blood? Yes, yeah, so it was a, it was a blood-based cancer that had metastasized to the brain. So this is the worst situation you could ever exactly. find yourself in. You know, it's the end of the road. All right, let's unpack this book then on cancer and help people. Just let's start somewhere and I want you to give us some of the points, the thoughts. I'll interrupt maybe here and there, but I want you just to share with us because it is a huge issue. It's like, I don't know, every few families has got someone they love who's struggling with cancer, it's a big issue. And what we're finding is it's, it's really unnecessary to get it. You know, when they look at even just some basic changes you can make to, to diet, to exercise, to stress, to alcohol and smoking, just by addressing five or six of these basic issues, you eliminate, as we mentioned on an earlier show, a third of all cancers. So imagine if you actually really focused on your health and really took good care of yourself, how many cancers would go away. Yeah. All right. So where do, how do we help people? Where do, where do we start in this book on the, the cancer killers? What do we do? I think, first of all, and it's easier for Dr. Majors to say it. He's the one who had the cancer and overcame it. So he'll tell people you have to take responsibility for having the cancer. I'm not allowed to say that. That's from him. Sure. Uh, but because yeah. people will really uh, take exception to that. They'll, they want to say, I, it's, I'm stricken with it. It was genetic. I couldn't help it. The problem is, first of all, even if that was true, it doesn't empower you to overcome it. So true. And so we, we want people to take responsibility. And your body really was designed, it's supposed to be a cancer killer. So every day a normal person, a healthy person, makes cancer cells. But your immune system is designed to kill them, keep them at bay so that you remain healthy. It's only when the system gets sick and, and, and it's repressed and depressed that the cancer can overtake you. So Dr. Majors would tell you that, that you, you, don't, you, you don't get cancer and now you're sick, you were sick and now you got cancer. The body wasn't functioning at its capacity so the cancer overtook you. Every organ in our body, literally every so often, whether it's a days or months, is completely replaced with new cells all the time. Is that true? Yeah, you're constantly regenerating. Right, so if, even if you had sickness in a, an organ, your body is rebuilding that organ nonstop. It's happening even as we talk, is that correct? Absolutely. If actually, if you see that, Dr. Majors has a pre and post MRI of his brain, and you saw a destroyed brain, and now one that's been completely regenerated, and he now has healthy tissue there. Wow. So God has designed us, doesn't matter what attacks us, because sometimes I hear certain diseases that people will mention, and it's like the news, talk shows, people, friends, they've attached such fear to it that if that happens to me, I'm probably finished. And you're saying that doesn't matter what this disease is, your body's designed to kill it. 
Yeah, and, that, that, and the great thing is if we can get our immune system functioning again, if you can get the body healthy again, it's designed to go back to killing cancer. And we, we don't want people to just go into remission and be a survivor. So hallelujah if you're a survivor, but the problem would be what if it comes back? And so that's why they get into five-year survival rates because it generally tends to come back if you've gone into remission. But if you've been restored back into a healthy, fully functioning being, you're back to killing it. We want to see you not just be a survivor, but go back to being a cancer killer like you were designed to be. Okay, that actually is a really big issue because even in our churches, people beat it. Many of them have act received miracles or they change something or something happens. Then no one says they're free from cancer until they have their five-year anniversary. Right. And a ton of people, I mean, I've seen people their whole life, they seem something crops up, they fight it, they'll win, something crops up. So are you saying that if you change your lifestyle, as simple as that, that this thing will probably stop owning you like that? Yeah, because you know, if the chemo and the radiation kills it, it doesn't mean you're a healthy person not developing too much cancer. It just means it, it killed enough of it to where we don't see it pick, being picked up in, in tests like it was, so we're now calling you in remission and a survivor. But the reality is if you haven't gotten any healthier, why would you not just start creating it again? But if we look at some very basic things, for example, sugar, like sugar actually feeds cancer. And there's so much sugar in so many foods. In fact, people with diabetes are more likely to get cancer because of this issue with dealing with carbohydrates. So if we go back to the kind of diet we're teaching, which is uh, high in fruits and vegetables, quality fats, you know, low in proteins, but good quality proteins, you know, this is one way to feed the body so you're not encouraging it to create cancer. But if we're on a high carb, lots of sugar diet, you're spoon feeding the cancer, giving it a better opportunity to grow and, and sugar and those types of diets also lower the immune system and that's what's supposed to be keeping the cancer cells at bay to begin with. Okay, but fruit is loaded with sugar. Yeah, so we like to focus on berries and just in the morning. So berries are, are low in sugar. It's also got a lot of what they call atherocyanins, which are antioxidants. And so there's all these things about berries that help your body fight cancer. Uh, then if you start to load up on vegetables, we've got, again, lots of good antioxidants. We have a cleansing mechanism to the vegetables. So there's lots of ways to eat that are actually helping you fight the cancer versus if you're doing sugar, processed foods, processed meats, it's the opposite. You're helping to produce the cancer. So you'd, eat, you'd still do other fruits. Like is, are the sugars in fruits better than just the table sugar and the fake sugars? And yeah, well, for, so God, when God made a fruit, there's fiber in there, there's lots of other nutrients that are important, and there's a synergy there that allows your body to process it, break it down, and, and eliminate it. Now, again, we're not gonna load up on lots of fruits because no. of the sugar, and we like to focus on berries because of all their anti-cancer fighting benefits and, and, and all that sort of thing. But we still keep it in the morning because you're not you don't want to go over to the point where you've gotten so much sugar in your system you're not burning it and excess sugar does get stored as fat and causes inflammation and other problems so you wouldn't juice fruit then because you need that fiber that's what i heard you say is that correct yeah I mean, if you do like say orange juice like yeah. you just, especially if you got it in a carton and there's no pulp or anything all you've got is the sugar from about five oranges and that's <laughs> all that's left and that's not what you want no, exactly. Now, what about juicing vegetables? Because, I mean, I've seen that for years, and there's lots of great books. Even the guy you were quoting in another program. Jack Belane, yeah, yeah. I mean, juicing vegetables was a huge issue. Yeah, I mean, you really can't say enough great things about vegetables. I know they're, you know, it doesn't taste like pizza or ice cream, but, but they do amazing things for your body, especially the green ones. And the green ones don't have the sugars in it, like, say, the, the root vegetables do, like carrots, for example have a lot of sugar. So if you're doing a lot of juicing of a lot of green vegetables, you're just constantly detoxifying your body, balancing your pH, helping yourself out. Now we want to eat vegetables too, so we do get the fiber and the other benefits from that. But yeah, juicing is a great thing. All right, so in this book, you are out, you walk people through this. Like what you just said, this is the, this is the fruit you should do, you should do it in the morning, all that is in there. Yeah, we walk you through the whole preventative process to not end up with cancer in the first place, you know, then the latter part of the book, if you are somebody with cancer, we do get into what you can do naturally, whether it's to help with the chemo and radiation, if you are receiving that, or even if, if they've told you that won't even work, like with Dr. Majors, what you can do instead. Okay, we'll take a break right here then. And when we come back, can we start unpacking that part? For those who know someone with cancer, what can you do? Great. We'll be right back with Dr. Ben Norman. Don't just take what everybody's telling you yeah. for granted. Go investigate, learn about it, and make your own decision about your bodies, your children's body, and you know your own health. 
We believe Jesus Christ came to give every person on this planet a chance to live with power, passion, and purpose. Through award-winning, world-class TV programs like this and life-giving resources in Spanish, French, Italian, Russian, and Hindi, Spirit Contemporary is changing lives around the world. Considerable expenses are involved, but each person reached is absolutely worth the cost. People are saved, their faith revived, eternities transformed, all because of your support. With your donation today, you will receive today's special resource. With the help of technology, it is now easier than ever to connect with friends and family all over the globe. And for the first time ever, Springs Church is available to watch online. Get access to Spear Contemporary Church every single week. You'll enjoy great music and an inspiring message from Leon Fontaine. You'll even be able to connect with people from around the world. This is my personal invitation to join me on Springs Online. Welcome back. My guest today, Dr. Ben Lerner and the author of The Cancer Killers. That's quite the title again. I mean, like the fact that we can control so much of this because it's like we're out of control. We, there's nothing we can do, but there's lots we can do. Yeah, what I love about the human body is, is that it, literally it has the best defense system in the world. So when you're exposed to any pathogen, if there's an aberrant cell in the body that we call cancer, everything in the universe sort of lines up physiologically to destroy what doesn't belong there and eliminate it in a healthy way if the immune system is working like it should. And it's only when we've suppressed immunity through lifestyle or overexposure to toxins or something that we've done to ourselves that immunity starts to drop off and the bad guys start to win. So we do have something to say about our future no matter what your genetic heritage is or, or what your situation is right now. Exactly. What do you say about, okay, I'm going to ask you some kind of straightforward questions, chemo, radiation. I have one camp that says, never in a million years would I ever do that, period. And then others say, I'll work with it. Uh, is there a direction you're going that you're not going to say on the air or what? <laughs> uh, I mean, unfortunately, that's been the only thing we've studied since President Nixon in the United States declared the war on cancer in the 70s. All we've done is invest in chemo and radiation. Mm -hmm. And we haven't looked into other things that could be done to fight cancer. And the problem, of course, with that that most people know is that it's, it's very sort of generic. It destroys lots of cells in the body. People get very sick and often die just from the treatment. So if people are already doing that, we have ways to help their bodies deal with the cancer. So I've helped a lot of cancer patients, given them certain nutrients that help their liver deal with the chemo and radiation. There are other supplements and, and herbs you can take to help your tissues heal from the chemo and radiation. So if that's the route somebody's going, we have programs, we have advice in the book we can give them to help deal with that. Would I personally do it? No. Yeah, I, I would not do that. My, my own mother had breast cancer recently. Um, she was a 50-year smoker, and so we did not do it. Um, we went the natural route, and she's completely free of cancer. Her doctors are blown away. They thought for sure we'd have to do this, and we said, you know, that's not the route we're going to go in. Especially she's older, so you know, she's in her late 70s. She's had a stroke before. So we're, you know, we said, listen, this is just going to harm her further, she's already in a weakened state, we just don't want to go that route. They ended up acquiescing to our demand there and she's you know, healthier than she's been in 10, 15 years now. It's kind of like people need to inform themselves because no one wants to tell you what to do. You need to make your own decisions, I guess. Yes, and that's how we feel about nutrition um, or exercise or cancer or vaccination, whatever the issue is. Don't just take what everybody's telling you yeah. for granted. Go investigate, learn about it, and make your own decision about your bodies, your children's body, and you know, your own health. Right, because it's too easy to say, well, I don't know who to believe. Well, then the research is online. You can go research anything yeah, you it's, want. It's so, it's so out there now. All right, so cancer killers. Now we're trying to help people who have got a cancer diagnosis. Where would you start? How, how can we help them and saying, these are the things that I would do if you've got cancer? And let's say they decided not to go with chemotherapy. What would you be telling them to do? Well, if somebody's not doing that, we have, and we have several listed in the book. These are medical doctors. So Dr. Majors, my co-author, he went to an oncologist who just doesn't do chemo and radiation. 
Oh, he, wow. his, his blood was actually studied to determine what nutrients it needed, uh, what foods to avoid and what foods to focus on. He was doing not just typical nutrition, but actually IV nutrition. So we know there are real positive benefits, for example, to vitamin C and, and what it converts to in the body and how it helps fight cancer. So he wasn't just swallowing vitamin C tablets. He was getting IV vitamin C in dosages that your body could not digest. I'm hearing more about that. Like, is it the Myers cocktail? What do you call it? Yeah, there's those types of... Uh, Myers cocktails. Is it like that or yeah, no? It's that type of thing, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So there, and so these are things you can do preventatively, um, but also things that can really help when, you know, when you're under the gun with, again, the, the idea that we're rebuilding the body to fight the cancer. We're, getting, we're storing health to the body so it can be a cancer killer again, not trying to go in there and kill cancers with broccoli. Uh, we're, we're creating a healthy body. So how much vitamin C would a person get like that? Well, so you, you literally, where a normal person can only absorb about a couple thousand milligrams every few hours, or you're just going to sort of go to the bathroom and get rid of the excess, yep. um, you're getting grams dumped into your bloodstream this way. So it's, it's radically more than you could ever swallow. What does that work out to? In, like if you were to get a vitamin C, a uh, tubal tab would be about 500. What's the measurement? Yeah, milligrams. So milligrams. We're talking about the whole gram, so and multiply it by 1,000. So we're at 100,000? Um, yeah, so, well, no, so if you're talking about a milligram, so, you know, instead of four, you're talking about 4,000. Right. Um, you know, so it's, you know, multiply whatever the number is by 1,000. So you'd be talking about bottles and bottles of vitamin C every day. And again, not going through the digestive system, right into the bloodstream to get this sort of super vitamin C effect at fighting whatever it is that you're trying to fight. And apparently vitamin C is supposed to nail cancer. Yeah, and, and again, it converts to other chemicals within the body that really help in this fight against cancer. And, and once again, rebuilding the system so that you're healthy again. So again, we're not just a survivor, we go back to a healthy person. And like any healthy person, we don't create cancer anymore, we create health. So there are doctors and people out there who are MDs and specialists who will work with people, because I actually have not heard of that. Yeah, we, we only send cancer patients to cancer medical doctors who just happen to do things other than chemo and radiation. Yeah, they're, they're not foolishly just trying something else. Yeah, no, I, I worry. Testing you. Yeah, I worry like when, um, you know, when we're looking into, we didn't really have a path. This is one of the reasons we wrote the book. What is the path? Yeah. So we, we get this diagnosis, we're told there's no help. I'm like, who do we call here? You know, what, yeah. what do I read? And there was nothing. And so as you looked into it, it's like, oh, go here and you do meditation and colonics or something. I'm like, you know, he's already eats pretty well, you know, yeah. and, he's, and he's a pretty sharp guy. It's not just going, you know, and, and resting and, and, you know, worshiping idols or something. You know, we, <laughs> we want to make sure there's a doctor, there's a diagnosis. And what we look for is markers. So in, in your blood, in your urine, there are markers of good or bad health. And so we have markers that we established with Dr. Majors and now with thousands of other patients that if these markers are high, that's an indication that you're unhealthy and moving towards cancer and other disease. But by certain lifestyle treatments, certain supplements, we can bring these markers down and continue to measure them to make sure that you're not only out of danger, but your lifestyle is keeping you out of danger. All right, so we're, the question I put to you was, if a person's got cancer, this is not preventative, they've got cancer, I don't think a lot of people um, are aware of some of these things. And they should still do their own research because we can't just fix it with a Band-Aid on today's show. Right. But to make them aware of where to go, um, like just the fact that you mentioned, you can have IV vitamins. Uh, what else can they put in IVs besides vitamins? Um, and there, there's, it's all vitamin-based, you know, mineral-based types of IV therapies, they call it, coming through the system. So it's going right into the blood to help you fight things even better. And then there's other things too. I mean, again, I, if you have cancer and are, are considering an alternative route, you want to find one of these doctors and they, they're going to help. test you, analyze you. It's not just anything going in the bag. It's per your findings, your markers, and they're carefully taking care of you. So it's not just foolishly right. doing nothing. Totally. Then other things, though, too, like, for example, if you, if you Google, you know, again, it's so great to be in the information age. If you Google exercise and cancer, what you will find is that virtually every type of cancer improves with exercise. Your incidence of getting cancer, the possibility of cancer, drops dramatically because of exercise. It's literally like the cancer-fighting drug of the century. So just certain things like movement. And so just getting Dr. Majors, getting our patients moving again. What kind of movement difference. would he do with bone marrow cancer and brain and... Yeah, and it's anything to just get the, 
the heart rate up and get more oxygen coming in the system. Oxygen is, is deadly to cancer, so you're trying to oxygenate yourself as much as possible. And that's some of the other therapies too, like there are things like they do ozone therapy, right. um, they, they, you do uh, infrared They inject sauna. that right into the vein too. Yes, yeah, so you also get yeah, ozone, ozone in, in, you know, and, and inject it in other areas too, but you, they yeah. get ozone into your system, you go infrared sauna so that your body's detoxing. You know, we found, for example, with multiple myeloma, which was Dr. Major's uh, issue, uh, that benzene toxicity. So you find these, these hmm. toxins, and that's part of the issue with cancer, is we're exposed to toxins that God didn't invent. So the body can't metabolize these toxins, and so they stay in the system and cause harm. And so we usually will find with our cancer patients there's some underlying toxin that requires detoxification, and infrared sauna is one great way to do it. What are the top toxins we're talking about? So if you look at, um, so when you go into a, a new home, he had, he had moved into a couple of new homes, and so in your carpets, in your sheets, in your, in your blankets and pillows, um, there's a lot of these benzenes and xylenes and toluenes. Yep. These are the chemicals that go into the colorings that, that we find in those types of things. Then you've got your processed foods. So if you read labels, if you don't understand the word, it's a toxin. And so you've got lots of red dye number 40s and, and words that have 17 letters long and no, and no vowels. You know, these kinds of things don't belong in the system. You know, medication, so people that are, uh, you know, may need their medication, but we do have to realize there are toxins in those medications. That's why they all have side effects. Uh, silver fillings in our teeth, you know, so we've got uh, this, these heavy metals right there in our system. Uh, we've got mold toxicity. So there's, a, we are constantly surrounded by toxins, so we should be also always, and we talk about this in the book too, always addressing the toxic burden our body's under and doing something to deal with that. If you were to go into a new home, okay, and you, so you, now you've got carpets, uh, you pick up, I mean, you could always throw all your sheets, once you buy them, if you wash them really well, it's that initial chemical that's in them? Would you have all your carpets done, like steam clean, before you even moved in, brand new ones? What would yeah, you yeah, do? Cleaning, cleaning is good, and they, they do something called outgassing, so you just, you know, get all the windows open, and you don't move in for a couple of weeks, and you let a lot of these new materials breathe and, and, and air out because it, that's, it's you know, the gets new in the environment. Yeah, the new materials are really toxic. I was talking to a scientist, uh, one of the top ones, and I asked him about long life. Could people live to be hundreds of years old? And he, and he thought about it, and he, and he said, only if they could figure out a way to get rid of the metals because yeah. he felt that's what would eventually kill you, would be, you know, they... We've got records in the Bible of 900 years old, but with all the metals. So our time is up, so this is my last question, but that's another area where vegetables and things like that, or is there anything else that would grab the metals and take them out? Well, I think what's great is God gave you something called glutathione, which is an intracellular detoxifier that we all have. Now, when you're exposed to toxins, you have glutathione wasting. The glutathione actually goes down. But eating raw, so one of the key things we do with people that have cancer or those that want to prevent it is raw foods. So once again, God has given us something in vegetables that actually ha contains glutathione and the substances necessary to produce glutathione in the system. So a raw food diet and then other supplements that help to build glutathione helps you get rid of toxins and heavy metals you know, naturally. Man, our time is up. Thank you. This has been fascinating, but thank you for being with me, Ben. Ah, it's been great to be here. I want to encourage you to get the book, The Cancer Killers, and it'll answer a lot of the questions. We've barely scratched the surface, and you need to get some great professional help in this area as well. We'll be right back. Devoted, a daily devotional created with you in mind. Easy to read and simple to understand. These two-minute faith boosters are available in eight different languages. Watch it on YouTube or have the booklet sent directly to your home. You can also receive Devoted to your email inbox daily. Become inspired as Leon Fontaine shares practical biblical teaching. Devoted is literally at your fingertips. Transform your life with this spirit contemporary devotional. Sign up to receive Devoted today. I'm so glad you joined us today. We love bringing you programs that really help people in everyday life. You know, our passion and our purpose is to take the gospel of Jesus Christ to the world. Now, many ministries are doing that. Why are we so ineffective, especially in North America? I believe so much of it has become religious, so much of it has become legalistic, and we call it spirit 
contemporary. We want it to be spiritually alive, potent, amazing, miraculous, but yet we want it to come across in a contemporary, relevant, cool way. So we call it Spirit Contemporary. We need you to help us. The time is, it's urgent right now that around this planet, we present the gospel in a way that touches every emerging generation. We cannot keep losing our kids and our grandkids. We must be able to communicate Jesus the powerful principles of the gospel in a way that they get it and they come on board. We would love to have you join us. Become a part of this family. You know, for $45 or more as a gift, we want to send you this series called Dreams, Calling, and Purpose. So many people get these three all mixed up. What's the difference between your dream your calling, your purpose. They all overlap, but there are powerful indicators as to what you should be doing with your life. And we would love to send this to you. We need partners. We need people to become a part of this family and help us take the gospel around the planet. One of the things we're doing as well is taking and translating this devotional, which we want to send you as well, into a bunch of languages. I've got a list here of the ones that we are already in, English, French, Spanish, Urdu. Uh, we are in Russian, Indonesian, Mandarin, and there's more that we're working on right now because we want to begin to touch every people group. Your gift today is going to see people come to know Jesus, not just in the English speaking world, but places where Muslims need to know Jesus, Hindus need to know Jesus, in places where it's hard for the gospel so far to really take root. We're seeing the spirit contemporary gospel of Jesus Christ changing lives. Go to the phone right now. Call us today. We'd love to have you be a part of what God is doing. We trust that you are being blessed, uplifted, and encouraged in your Christian walk through today's program. As a viewer, you should know that we care about you. We value you greatly and appreciate your prayers. Did you know that Spirit Contemporary International is taking the good news of Jesus Christ around the world through award-winning programs like this? We are actively translating ministry programs into languages like Spanish, French, Italian, and even Russian. We even air on Islamic television stations in the Middle East. This means that millions upon millions of people are hearing about Jesus Christ in their language, and it's all thanks to people like you. Considerable expenses are involved, so we need your support, because each person who gives their life to Jesus is absolutely worth the cost. Each is of infinite value to God. You are very important to us. We care greatly about your spiritual growth which is why we would like to get today's resources into your hands. When you support this program by making a donation, you are not only enriching your walk with the Lord, you are sharing Jesus with someone on the other side of the globe. Your donation transforms lives by reaching literally millions of people with the gospel. Call now and change someone's life today. Tomorrow, Leon welcomes author Christine McGuire. Christine was an occult practicing witch, but God never gave up on her. It's our identity in Christ mm -hmm. that helps us to understand where we're going in this life and, and the authority that he has given us.